I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth, and I, along with our town board, are proud to present At Home with North Hempstead, a series of special programs for children, seniors, as well as entertainment for residents of all ages. We hope you enjoy this special presentation and check back often for new content. and thank you for joining me today so we're gonna be working on this beautiful collage it, well, the work we're gonna be doing is inspired by it this is a cutout by Henry Matisse and as you can see it's filled with a lot of geometric and organic shapes we're gonna take inspiration from that and create our own beautiful uh, cutout collage so for the project if you have some construction paper that will be good I'm using only three colors but if you have a variety of colors feel free to use them some type of glue you can use glue stick or the other type whichever is fine you will also want to have a scissor if you don't have a scissor you can tear the paper and also a permanent marker a black one I'm using um, any paper should fine but if you can find some kind of heavy paper so it doesn't um, crumple up that'll be good and I think we're gonna get started okay so it might get a little messy <laughs> so what we're gonna start out by doing first is we're gonna be making a lot of shapes right so this is a very process based type of art where you really just want to focus on the process so you're gonna be making start out with wavy or curvy lines and connect them right so we're not making any exact shape we're making some type of random organic shape if you want you can also make some geometric shapes like triangles you could make some squares you can also create your own new shape you know by just starting with a line making a lot of wavy curvy shapes other things like that and then connecting it uh, so organic shapes are shapes that do not have any what's it called straight lines so try making a good amount of those you can also make shapes that are inspired by something so if you want to make like we could make this like a hand but it won't look fully like a hand <laughs> kind of looks like a seaweed but it has like looks like five fingers uh you can make hearts things like that whatever you would like but have fun with this because we're going to be cutting out the shape soon to make the collage When you're making the shapes, you can also, if you want, like close your eyes and just allow the marker to move around and see what happens. Um, you can make some complicated shapes and you can also make some very simple shapes because we do have to cut these out. So you don't want to make it too complicated for yourself where it would take a really long time to cut out the very detailed shapes. And you can also create shapes that repeat, right? To create some sort of pattern. Um, you could have like like a three shape pattern. Um, this this shape reminds me like of a dinosaur. <laughs> well, an upside down dinosaur. <laughs> um, so I, you can start seeing like people, animals, or just objects within the shapes, which will be really cool. And I think this will, we're gonna create just a little bit more shapes. And then we're gonna get started with cutting everything out. Those two look like two snakes. Yeah, they do look like snakes. <laughs> so this is what I have so far. I'm not gonna create too many shapes because the paper I'm using is relatively small. So yeah, I'm gonna start cutting out. Uh, so if, um, if you're not too comfortable with the scissor, you can have someone help you or if you want the um, you can also tear them out a little bit. It might be a bit difficult, but tearing is an option. Now, for some of them, I'm gonna be cutting, <clears throat> I'm gonna cut some in a way where I don't see the, like the black Sharpie line, the outline, and then others, I'm gonna leave the black um, Sharpie outline. That's just something I kinda wanna experiment with. So you can decide if you wanna keep the Sharpie line or if not. Uh, yeah, this one's getting a little difficult because the lines are so narrow, but it's all right. Okay, yeah, so as you can see when you're cutting, there's a lot of maneuvering. Definitely be careful 
take your time. You don't have to rush this. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Thankfully, I, I, yeah, I think I got it. All right. So as, as you can see, you have to move the shape around a lot. You don't want to just hold it in one, like just hold it one way and then try to, no, you have to really just kind of like allow the shape in the, um, what's it called? Yeah, just allow it to guide you. Don't try to force um, the paper to do what you want it to do. Just go with it. We're also going to be using any of the, I guess it would be called like negative shape, which is when we cut out the shape we wanted, we're going to have that empty space. You can also use that for the collage. I think that actually be pretty cool to see some of the negative shapes next to the positive shapes. And it also gives you more shapes to use. <laughs> this one reminds me of a crown. I like that. And it's also in yellow. I don't think I was trying to make a crown, but it still looks good. Uh, all right. This one, I think I'm going to try to create two shapes from this. So I'm going to cut out the, like the inside part of it and I can make that one shape. And then I'm going to cut out the actual shape that I meant to cut out <laughs> just to give me a lot of shape and a lot of options to choose from later on when I start to glue everything. This one takes a little bit of maneuvering, but I'm getting there. So for this one, I did decide to keep the black Sharpie outline and also for the crown. I thought it looked pretty cool because I am planning to, um, after I collage everything together, I am planning to add some Sharpie design around them so that's why i thought it could kind of like complement it a little bit and this one is kind of just like a half circle oh boy it's gonna be <laughs> a bit of a challenge with the hand but i'll show you just a little technique i mean i don't know if it's really technique but just something you can do when you have a very complicated shape to cut so when you have something like this you don't really want to start up by um fully cutting the whole shape you can start out a little bit but i usually just like to cut out yeah just like cut out the overall shape and then go into the small parts because this way it makes it easier to handle the paper because it's a little smaller and so it just makes it easier to cut everything out right so i'm just cutting out the small shapes now one by one if you do mess up a little bit it's all right <laughs> It's because all the shapes, you know, they're organic, they're random. Nobody's going to know that it's not meant to look like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, okay. This, this technique seems to be working. So that's good. And remember, this is a very process oriented type of art. So like, as I'm making these, I don't really have, um, any idea in mind really of the final product or of what I want to do. It's really supposed to be just a fun project, um, very like that you experiment with and you see what you can create. So, you know, just have the confidence and know that you'll create something beautiful no matter what happens. This is also a really nice big negative shape. I'm gonna try to see if I can use it. The negative shapes are the shapes we cut out and then what's left of it. And we've got one more. Ooh. This looks like a big, like, fish. <laughs> I don't know. That's what it looks like. Like an eel? I, I don't know, I'm seeing things. All right, well, this one will be easier to cut because it's much bigger. And then, oh wow, okay, we're moving pretty good. And then we're gonna start gluing. So remember, if you do have, um, like a lot of different colors, and you want to create shapes that look a bit more realistic like if you wanted to make grass you can definitely make you know the shape of grass on green um if you wanted to do some types of like you can make the construction color paper <laughs> the construction paper color match the natural color of the object i've decided I'm, I'm doing more abstract shapes and things so that's why i'm not really matching the like the color of the object to its natural color but if you want that is an option i'm also using a very limited color but you can definitely use 
as much colors as you want. I thought this one had a lot of colors, but when I opened it, it was like, no, you only have three colors. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you see, making it work somehow. Making it work. <laughs> And I think after I do the triangles, I'm probably not going to cut out that other shape in the red. I don't know. I don't really like it anymore. <laughs> so it's okay if you made a shape and then you're like, I don't want to cut it anymore. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, the triangles look like mountains, so I might use them because I, I don't I'm not really making like a landscape, but they just look like mountains. I don't know what I'm going to be making, but I'm gonna be excited to see what I end up making in a couple of minutes. And th that yellow shape over there still looks like a dinosaur to me. I don't know why. Looks like one of those big, but it's, it has a very short neck. Mm. These shapes have you seeing things. <laughs> and then I think that's about it for the red. So I'm still saving the negative shapes to use along with the positive shapes. Cause that, that, it'll create something pretty cool, I'm sure. And then, ooh, we got one more snake. Yeah, and also that, those two, this little pattern. Okay, so I'm, I do plan to create patterns with the, not so much with the shapes, but with the black Sharpie marker after I've added the shapes. So patterns are, they're shapes that repeat right so a pattern can really be anything anything can be a pattern as long as it repeats um you can have like triangle square triangle square triangle square it could be like five shapes but they repeat in a specific order um you could also do like dots if you have a lot of dots that could be considered a pattern a lot of circles so start thinking about that if there's any patterns you might want to have or you know create your own patterns it's it's this is very like it's an experiment so you know have fun with it and see what you can experiment with and what you can create okay i think we've got all the shapes now okay so my table looks like a mess now so after this you're gonna want to try to organize all the colors <laughs> all the shapes by colors i mean <laughs> so i'm gonna put all my green in a green pile all the red in the red pile and all the yellow in a yellow pile for someone who's using a variety of colors you're gonna have more piles but that's okay you're also just gonna be having less piles mine's are pretty big because i cut the shapes pretty big but it should be all right i'm just gonna try to make it a bit neat because it's looking a bit it's a lot happening. <laughs> okay. And I think for this one, I'm probably going to be using the clear, like the liquid glue. Because I realized that with the shapes, it's easier to just kind of like add the liquid glue and then glue it down. Then use the glue stick. So if you do have liquid glue, I would say it's, it's really just easier to use that. All right. So I'm just going to finish cleaning up and then just a final look at Matisse's work, just so you can see, just as inspiration. <laughs> you can also do this on a colored background if you want. Like if you want to paint the paper or use another colored paper first, you can do that. I wanted to use white paper because I kind of want to see what it's going to look like. Now what you're going to do is take your big shapes and some of the medium ones and just arrange them around the paper. There's not really any specific way um, just take the time, figure out how can I arrange this to make it look interesting. This looks like a dinosaur on grass. <laughs> so I like it there. I'm gonna keep it there. Um, but yeah, this could take you, I don't know, just a short amount of time or a while, but keep going at it until you see something where your mind is like, ah, oh, this is pretty cool. Um, if you want to create <clears throat> like a scene, you could do that or just place them anywhere. That's fine too. This looks like a hand, but it also looks like a seaweed. No, it's not seaweed. I think it's like, I don't know what's, I think it's coral leaves. <laughs> uh, I keep forgetting the name of everything. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing the big shapes first, only because it's easier to add the smaller shapes on top of the bigger shapes. And I'm using the bigger shapes kind of like as background. And I'm going to use the smaller shapes as little 
mm, like little details. So, yeah, I got two snakes. I don't know what to do with them yet. It looks like they're just saying hello. <laughs> I don't know. And then for the negative shapes, you can try to place them around like, like the corners and see like what other shape they create. Because every time you place a shape on the paper, it creates another shape, right? Which is pretty cool. So take the time to just play around with that and see what you can make. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I'm making. Honestly, I'm just moving shapes around. I mean, and that is what like a drawing or a painting or any piece of art is. It's shapes that are composed in a specific way, right? All the famous paintings, pieces of art, they're all shapes that the artist decided to put in a certain order, right? This one's just a little bit different because we don't know what order we're putting them in. That's, that's really about it. <laughs> And then, I mean, it's starting to look like something right now. I'm not sure what that something is yet, but it's starting to look like something. And I'm still taking the time to move shapes around. You know, if you place it down, it's not permanent. So feel free to lift them up and move them around. Um, if you're like, oh, this might look better here or over there. And I'm trying to figure out what shapes to use around the edges because I also want the edge of the paper to also be interesting so I'm I guess my main mission for this project is to create an interesting composition right so something when you look at it you're like huh that's interesting that's about it yeah I think that's about it and I was I think I see I feel like I got two dinosaurs one upright one upside down it kind of looks like a dinosaur on a grass with a crown and two snakes just moving around. So it kind of looks like a landscape. <laughs> I guess I'm making a landscape. Another cool idea would be if you took the shapes and made them look like, like a person or like a robot. That could be kind of cool. So you take these abstract shapes and rearrange them to look like to, to something um, realistic, something that is recognizable that would be awesome okay i'm gonna start gluing when i'm gluing what i'm gonna be doing is i'm only gonna be adding the glue to the edge i'm um, probably a little bit in the middle but mostly on the edge of the paper so i'm allowing the glue to just follow the sh shape is it? yeah just like how the shape is and i'm not adding too much because if you add too much glue the it, it, it'll, it'll just become a little bit messy so you don't want to you don't need a lot of glue also because the paper is very lightweight and be as careful as you can and also remember as soon as you place it down it's going to be stuck so you want to know where it's going to go when you glue it I mean before you glue it because I think I was supposed to place it somewhere else but now it's kind of stuck but we'll go with it <laughs> that's that's the whole that's the one thing you need for this project. You just gotta, you just need to be able to go with, with the flow and what happens. All right, when you glue it, please just gently press down to make sure that it's fully glued on the paper and also so there's no little air bubbles. Uh, maybe for this one I can try the glue sticks. Yeah, for, for the smaller shapes, the glue sticks doesn't really work just because it's, it's a bit harder to add it so I'm just gonna probably stick with the glue the liquid glue so then maybe you can use glue sticks for big shapes and liquid glue for the small shapes mm, that could work yeah okay so I've got little I mean they look like red mountains yeah they kind of do look like red mountains okay so I'm gonna start gluing everything down and you're gonna get sticky fingers so you can always grab a paper towel if you need just to wipe some of the glue off from time to time because it's not going to be fun <laughs> if you have very sticky fingers and you grab a paper and it just sticks to your finger the whole time. Okay. And as you can see, before I glue it down, you can, you know, you still have the time to decide where do I want to actually place it down. 
because you can change your mind, you know? Nothing is final with this project until you kind of glue it down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you glue it, I'm pretty sure you can lift it up. It's just gonna leave the, like the glue stain. So you would just have to allow that to dry. Yeah, but it's all right. Okay, got it. <laughs> and make sure you're patting down the paper or else it's not gonna actually stay glued down. Just like little, light little pats. Nothing crazy. Okay, good. Bloop. Okay, so this is looking good. It looks like we've got a dinosaur on a grass over a mountain. Okay. We've got a lot happening here. Uh, so I'm kind of taking, I'm gluing large small medium i'm kind of gluing them all at once if you want you can glue all the large shapes first and then medium and then small i'm just deciding to glue them like whichever shape interests me next is what i'm gluing and i think i like these little two snake like shapes next to each other so i'll probably just keep them yeah just keep them together and little snakes Swir no snakes don't swirl. I don't know what they do. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hmm, I'm trying to figure out what else I could do to the composition. Just like thinking ahead. Cause I, w I want it to look interesting, you know? <laughs> I don't even know what interesting is, but I guess something that when I look at it, I'm like, ah, oh, this looks cool. But we I'm gonna have to wait and see what I make. Cause I have no idea what I'm making yet. But I know it's gonna be something good and pretty awesome. And all right, I'll take a break from the big shapes. Uh, but this is what we have right now, right? We're getting something. We've got this really big green shape, our yellow dinosaur, yellow snakes snaking around, and some red mountains. Huh. I feel like it could be like a a movie or something I don't know <laughs> okay oh this one is cool because the shape it like was able to create like a really cool edge if you can see like it was perfect for the edge of the paper so if you find shapes that have like 90 degree angles or that look really cool for the edge try to add those first before you add all the other shapes so that way you see how the edge of the paper looks because that's definitely important you know you want to make sure that every part of the paper has some kind of interesting look to it because overall that's going to make everything look interesting so even though this is very you know experimented it's very like you're experimenting with it you still want to be you know thinking about where you're placing everything and be a bit intentional with where you're placing it and at first i was going to place this one somewhere down but I think I'm gonna change my mind. Might look cool up here. Hmm. Yeah. But also, you can change the orientation of the paper, right? So even though we start this way, I could turn the paper around as I'm working just to see it in different views. You can turn it upside down. You decide which way is the right way for the paper. And as you're working, just, you know, turn it around if you want to get different views of it. Because then that might help you. I don't know, create some cooler, a cooler composition. I don't think I'm really gonna move mine around as much because I'm still okay with this composition. Oh boy. This looks like a really, this is really cool. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm really starting to like it now. Now at first this ship was gonna be a dinosaur, but I don't know anymore. It looks like it could be something else. I don't know. I'm still thinking. And you probably don't want to have too many big shapes because if you have so much big shapes, um, it might become a bit overwhelming. So maybe you'll have like one or two big shapes and then a, maybe like four or five medium and a couple small. But it's really up to you because you do want to leave some empty space because we're going to be going over it with the Sharpie soon with the white spaces. The green shape I'm holding is probably like, can you stop moving me around so much? Because <laughs> I really like this shape and I'm kind of having a bit of difficulty figuring out where it could go. 
Oh my god, I don't know how many times I've turned turned the shape. <laughs> uh, I'll come back to it later. All right, so back to this yellow. Eh, maybe I'll make it a dinosaur, like a baby dinosaur. Maybe I don't know. It's hard to figure out for some of the shapes, because the shape could look cool, but if it doesn't like complement the other shapes, then it's like ah, uh, you know. Okay, I'll leave it there. It kind of looks cool there, yeah. Okay, so I think it's it's starting to come along pretty well right now, you know. And I, I'm pretty sure that if you're using a lot more colors, that your colors, um, oh, you can also decide, like, if you want, like, super bright colors, you could just focus on super bright colors. Okay, maybe I should stop here for now. And I'm trying to figure out when to stop to start adding the patterns, but really just uh, listen when you're, like, when your brain is like, okay, stop. <laughs> okay, so for the patterns, I mean, it doesn't really have to be patterns. It could be lines just lines that follow the same directions so these lines I was trying to mimic the direction of the snake also be careful of glue if you see that there's still glue that hasn't dried yet just wait um, so the main point with this is you want to be kind of making these expressive interesting lines and shapes around the construction um, the shape with the construction paper. So I turned that green thing into like a sun ray. Um, think about what you can turn the shapes into, but you can also make patterns, uh, shape patterns, shapes with the black Sharpie. Um, you're creating basically designs around the shapes you already made to make them pop out. Now these designs or patterns might have nothing at all to do with the what you were trying to do in the first place, but go with it and see where it could end up you know uh, little dots here you can make big dots you can make small dots i guess for the big dots it would be circles that you color in <laughs> but I, I like those five little like squares and rectangles that i made before they look pretty cool you could make those bigger if you want i'm probably just gonna keep them small for now so you can try to make like different shapes and patterns within because the pattern can continue but i'm probably just going to be keeping them enclosed within the shape and another way if you're having trouble coming up with something is just f create lines that mimic the edge of the shape right so if you have a wavy or curvy what's it called oh i'm gonna add a hat what well, it kind of looks like a hat i don't know i was trying to add a hat at first on the snake but I'm not sure what it turned out into now okay I don't, it's not a hat anymore <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep it there I'm gonna make some little grass triangles I, that's when I think of grass I just think of triangles but it's starting to look kind of cool now right with the black um, lines the shapes just to really make everything pop out oh, I'm kind of liking it now if you have like a thicker marker, you could try experimenting and doing like thicker lines. I'm going to do a cute little flower. So you can draw realistic objects. I mean, if you want, you can draw a person. <laughs> that could be cool. But just have fun with this step. Add whatever you would like to it because there's really no right or wrong, you know. There's no way to really be doing this wrong because you're really just making lines and shapes. Which, however, like, however much you want. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what else I can add. And I'm trying to, for some of them, I'm trying to turn the objects, oh, sorry, the shapes into an object. And for others, I'm just making, like, oh, sh some straight lines could go here. Some curvy lines could go there. Or I'm making dots here. So whatever comes to your mind, I would say, you know, don't think about it too much. Don't overthink it. And just go with it okay I got I got two little hearts connected by two lines I don't know what that means but I'll just leave it there and I'm just gonna continue the dot patterns Ooh, this is how it looks like in another direction huh 
I'm actually liking it now. I, I think I like it a lot more with the black uh, shapes and patterns that I'm adding now because it helps bring out the other shapes and it also adds just some kind of interesting stuff to the background, you know, and it also just captures my eyes more. So it makes it look like I, I want to look at it more and really see what else I can find. So it's more interesting to the eyes. Ooh, I like this. This looks pretty cool. Ah, <laughs> see, I didn't even know I was going to create this. <laughs> I gave the dinosaur a little eye and a smiley face. There we go. So now it looks like an actual dinosaur. <laughs> you can also draw on top of the, what's it called? On top of the shapes, the construction shapes. That, that's fine. There's no, um, I mean, I don't know. Is there really any rule to this project? Not really. Yeah, I think I guess the one rule is just go along with it. <laughs> if you make a mistake, just go along with it and turn it into something else. It, it'll be all right. But I'm, I'm happy with how this collage co came out. I know it's a little bit different from um, Matisse's original collage, but we remember we were just using it as an inspiration. We weren't trying to recreate it. We were just trying to look at it and be like, ah, oh, this is inspiring. I'm going to create something similar to it. And then boom, we've got this beautiful collage that looks like a dinosaur walking through the grass and it, there's like a big sun ray outside there are two little snake buddies uh, i don't know doing their snake things there's a hand waving maybe it's i don't know and then there's a flower above it so it does look like a landscape actually it really does look like a landscape Ooh, this is nice oh i'm happy <laughs> so this is the finished product I am actually really happy with this like it came out much better than I would have thought like this looks really good so I hope that your collage came out really awesome and that you had a lot of fun making this project and you know that you were able to learn some new techniques or ideas also if you want you can cut off the parts that hang over but that's up to you so thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you in another one okay bye guys <laughs>